B, cameraman Todd, Jonathan here. We are live from Crystal River, Florida. We are with USGS and we are doing the annual manatee assessments with world renowned Dr. Bob Bondi, who's around here somewhere. And right in this tent, a manatee is receiving an assessment. What are you guys doing? <laughs> you're, li you're live on YouTube. People all around the world are now watching. It's very exciting. This manatee is being assessed for its health. And over here in the next tent, another manatee is being assessed. I'm going to sneak around the back of the tent so we can see the face of the Metis. There we go. Oh, hi. We're live on YouTube right oh, now. Cool. <laughs> and then let's try that one more time to straighten out. In one, two, three. Perfect. Much better. Good job, guys. <laughs> It's pretty exciting, you guys. Sure. I'm, I'm turning the camera over to Cameraman Todd. All right. Hey, everybody. This is pretty awesome. I'll say what's going on a little bit. So we're out at Paradise Point in Crystal River, Florida. So on the west coast of Florida, there's a ton, ton of manatees in Crystal River. Because they come here to stay warm when the weather gets cold and the ocean gets cold. They come up into the fresh water where there's hot water springs and they sort of bathe and luxuriate. And once a year, the U.S. Geological Survey comes out here and they actually catch a couple of manatees to assess their health, to see how they're doing. They do some blood samples and they weigh them and uh, they measure all kinds of stuff that is way beyond my pay grade. And then they release them again. And so we've been filming for a Blue World episode all day today. Um, we've had a three person crew, cameraman Todd and me and our new guy, Zach. And he's actually, <laughs> he got the short straw. So he's in a dry suit, freezing his butt off in the water. Uh, he's filming the animals being released, which is super cool because I didn't have to do it. Uh, I flew the drone, that was really cool. Todd did the heavy lifting. So uh, what we're doing right now, we've got a whole tent full of biologists and veterinarians uh, that are helping to do the manatee assessments. And there's two tents and they kind of go through a two-stage process and then they weigh them. Then they weigh them in this gigantic uh, A-frame and then uh, they release them. So what do you think, Todd? Should we get out and see if they're catching one? Absolutely. I think there's a question of how manatees are different than seals that's come in. That's, that's a great question. So seals can get up on land, okay? They're both marine mammals, but seals, whether they're sea lions or true seals, you know, they can sort of either walk or flop up on dry land and warm up and chill out and relax uh, and have their pups. Um, but manatees are completely and fully aquatic. They live in the ocean. They're almost like whales. They come up to breathe at the surface. They are marine mammals. And um, they prefer to eat nothing but plants, sea grasses. And so uh, they are completely herbivorous. Um, the only marine mammal that is completely herbiver herbivorous, they don't eat fish or crabs or any of that, just grass. They're like sea cows, essentially. And they're a little bit slow and chill and they're totally harmless and they're lovable. And when we do our segment, we'll show you underwater just how cute and adorable they are. Great. Um, and uh, <laughs> how there, long? there's Zach. Zach was just in the water. How, how did that shot go? I went really well. Got the manatee release. Yes? Yeah. All the viz. Awful. Okay. But was it good enough? It was good enough. It was awesome. nice, it's muddy, it's all stirred up, but that's where the manatees liked it. Or three I swam right over. Wow. While getting there, and then yeah, the manatees swam right off the back of the boat. Oh, beautiful. Took right off, healthy as could be. None the worse for wear. None the worse for the all wear. All right, that's what I like to hear. Awesome. So we were thinking about running down to the capture beach. Is the sun is terrible? I, I really was shooting right into it. Um, yeah, it's very bright here. There we go. Yeah, when we got up this morning, it was in the 40s. It was Much very better. chilly, but now it is beautiful. So, um, yeah. So what they are doing? It's it's kind of interesting. They've got one beach where they catch the manatees because it's near a channel where a lot of manatees go by. It's very narrow. And then they shuttle them around to this beach where they've sort of set up the triage area here. And I'm not sure that each 
one goes in its own tent, right? They're not going into both tents. No. Just one tent. And then after that, they'll end up on the And this is Mike Walsh, who's the head veterinarian. Hi. I don't know if you remember, we did a segment with you in 1999, Endangered you Mermaids. Right? You remember that film? Which group are you with? I'm with so, Ocean Michigan, but now we're with New World TV. So, how are you? Been good. <laughs> How long have you been doing the assessments, Mike? Um, I've been here since 2008. 2008. But I was doing manatee since 1985. So we helped uh, to develop a lot of the Sea World approaches to manatees years ago. Are there any major trends you can tell us about a year over year? Well, the best news trend is that the numbers have gone up. But the interesting relationship to that is the numbers have gone up because of all the protection. So what a lot of people don't understand is we need the protection to be able to allow them to increase in number. And if we're not careful and we downlist them inappropriately, then what you end up getting is a lack of the protections that could go away, a deterioration of the environment, and we can't handle the numbers in the future. So we think we haven't reached carrying capacity, but the way to keep doing this is to keep those things in place, not to take them away. Great, great. Awesome. We'll let you get and back we've to got work. a we've got Thanks. people in the house from all over the world. We've got Dubai, UAE. Yeah. Uh, I, I've seen we're, Russia we're come in. Right oh, great, great! Oh, you're broadcasting to the entire world. That's actually, some that's are, what are some of the other groups that are here today? I know the USGS sort of runs its event, and then it's a combination of things. You've got USGS, which is the originators of how this was being done, but right. FWC has been the major player in terms of captures, Florida wildlife. Fish and Wildlife, Fish and wildlife. Conservation, Sorry. conservation Commission. Right. Right. And then we've got of, There's a lot of acronyms to remember. Yes, there are. <laughs> and then you've got University of Florida. Yep. You've got Clearwater Marine Aquarium. Yep. You've got Lowry Park Zoo. Yep. We've got um, a number of veterinarians from other facilities as well. So we're actually stocked with being able to handle just about anything there is. Because everybody's here. I saw, I saw. So we've got a couple of requests to see the animals. So I'm going to uh, slide right, into one of the out. tents. Right. Maybe we can follow can Dr. Walsh. Doing? Sure. So the first thing is that, that are happening in the case of an animal like this, it comes in um, so from the boat. We need to get some identifying characteristics. So photos are important. So the USGS people, Kathy here in particular, as she mentioned on the um, having the ability to identify them over 4,000 animals, we can often find out within a very short period of time based on their research who this is. In some cases, we caught them only once. Once she ends up getting the pictures, then we end up in a position where we need to collect other biological information so they'll be rolled in order to put a frisbee under them which collects the urine. We'll grab fecal material because that'll give us an impression of not only what they're eating but also what could be going on from a parasite load and other things. And then they'll also mark the back. See the little orange mark? Those are marked to where their genital slit and their umbilical area. Those are standard placement areas for okay, the back. Okay, thank you. So then using an ultrasound machine, you can actually measure the thickness of that subcutaneous fat layer, which oh. is a correlation with how their body conditions do. H how are they? Um, how fat is it? You can ask Kathy how those are going. You should never ask a female manatee how thick her subcutaneous fat layer is. When we were perfecting this, Bob would practice on me. Oh. Um, but there was um, nothing there, so it was a yeah, bummer. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> so, could you talk a little bit about uh, what's done to, uh, to uh, give the creatures oxygen, help them breathe and be comfortable? Right. Well, right now they're in the process of bleeding. We bleed from both sides because that speeds up the process. So we get half the blood from each flipper. Then at the front end, what we found years ago was that when you're checking these animals when they're on the shore, they have gone through a little bit of struggling yep. on, on the beach and possibly on the boat, they can become acidotic. Just like a runner? <laughs> acidotic? Yes. What's so that? acidotic is when your blood pH gets out of its normal range. Okay. So someone, for instance, who runs too much will get muscle cramps because they develop a myositis and that's often related to too much acid that actually is accumulating in the blood. Huh. And so what we're trying to do with the oxygen is to be able to supplement the oxygen. Now they're out on the land, their ability to pull in the same volume of air has decreased, maybe it's half. Because you know, exactly. they're really heavy and the uh, exactly. land is squishing them. And what's going on is when she takes a breath, she has to move her whole body up. That's a lot of weight to move. Right. And so we're being careful that we got hands on, but we don't have weight on. Yeah. Okay. So then what we're doing with the oxygen is we're giving half the volume yeah. more oxygen. 
that can keep them from going anaerobic because the anaerobic, when, you, when you're too active, you become anaerobic. That's why your muscles start having problems with the acidosis and the myositis. And so if you're pulling in enough oxygen, you can offset that. So what we're trying to do is to reverse that so we don't get any worse. Right. And then as soon as possible, that's why we have an hour relationship on the time of handling. They go back in the water and pull in the breathing. So it's one hour and then they're back. Yeah. And uh, just some of the basic questions. How do you identify the male from the female? <laughs> The kids, it's, it's, asking, the kids are asking. <laughs> there's, there's a whole range of people. Questions. There's a couple of different ways to identify male from female. And what, the easiest way is when we turn them over, there's going to be a difference in the openings of the genital area and the angle. So your female is going to have the external opening of the genitalia is close to the anus. The male is going to be almost halfway up the body. So that's easy to tell. Oh, okay. The other thing that happens in the males is that the males tend to have longer flippers. Right. And the longer flippers will give you an indication that's a male. Right. And of course the females of course the females have uh, nipples in their armpits too. True. Um, and that's, that's another way to look at it. But the males are actually built to where, during the breeding phase, they wrap those arms around the females so they need longer arms. To be oh, really? Okay. Cool. So now she's measuring the back fat that we were talking Oops, about. Sneak in there. That's yeah. actually, they call it back fat because the original way, the, the original reason for the development of this was to look at animals that were being evaluated to be eaten as they looked at the amount of back fat in the animal on rating the animal. <laughs> in this case, it gives us a great indicator of what the nutritional status is. And so you can correlate. We'll also give them a body score by looking at them. So okay. we'll do a number that lower the number to worse shape they're in. So if somebody was emaciated, terribly skinny, they might get a one and a half. Somebody who's normal gets a three. Someone who's overweight gets a four. Someone who's underweight gets a two. So if you go to Hobbit Pass and Spring State Park, what's the those guys? Depends. Uh, um, those guys are pretty chunky. Yeah. <laughs> they're probably, get, they're probably gonna end up getting a higher score. Yeah. But that's what Mother Nature meant them to do. Right. They should be packing on that fat to get through the winter. Yeah. And that's the same thing that actually we developed for many years ago. Not me. So you're ready for the winter. <laughs> So how, how thick is this? I'm just going to get a shot from the front. Here's the oxygen cylinder. So they supplement the air. They're breathing with oxygen. The creature is made very comfortable, and uh, manatees, being mammals, can breathe out, not <coughs> breathe air, so they can stay uh, quite comfortable for a long time. What are you talking about? <laughs> Just reassuring people that the animal isn't being harmed. Right, right, right. The animals are very calm. They're mellow. And that's why, Not always, but that's usually. why in our initial blood sample, though, we also do a blood gas. The blood gas measures that acidosis, measures the body's balancing capabilities. So someone who is struggling on the beach and maybe have struggled on the boat, that acidosis will show up by a lower pH. So you're going to have a pH in your blood of like 7.3. Someone who's having some difficulties that struggled a little bit might have a 7 or a 7 1. That gives us some cause for concern because that means the body is taking on that acid and it has to react to it. Your body actually has bicarbonate in it, which is the way you modify that. So the body's bicarbonate then goes towards balancing that back out. We're measuring all those parameters so we can see by that what kind of shape they're in. Is it the CO2 that gives it, makes it acidic? Well, the CO2 can make it acidic. Carbonic acid type of deal? It, it can be two, two different origins. It can be from the body tissues. It can also be from a decrease in capability in the respiratory system. So if the CO2 is elevated as part of that acidosis, and we get, get them to breathe more often, we can drive that back down. That's why when you watch them from the front, if they're not breathing on a regular basis, at least five breaths per minute, we're going to pull water out of the nose, which is going to stimulate breathing, which is going to get rid of some of that CO2. And it's what the pouring in the water. So that's why we're pushing and pushing. Okay. Cool. Right. 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 Cool. What we're gonna right. try, what we're gonna try to do is those are our, our new prototype ultrasound tape. All right, well let's check out the prototype ultrasound tape. Hey Jonathan. Yes. You've got a long time fan over here. Where? Right here. Well hi. Nice to meet you. Jonathan Bird. What's your name? How long have you been watching? 
Before I went to college. Really? Yeah. Nice. I, mean, I haven't seen it for a really long time. What? Why not? The show gets better every month, doesn't it, you guys? <laughs> oh, yeah, I did. I did. I, did, I, did, I, did, I, did, I watched that a lot. There's a load over there, right? Oh, nice. Yeah, and I can oh, wait. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. I'm not sure we need it. You don't have to need all the unless you want to throw it on it. I'm not thinking she's probably would. Yeah. Oh, it's been Yeah. That's, that's what I don't want. Oh, yeah. Cameraman Todd, what are they doing? So there's questions. How many manatees can baby? Uh, how many babies can manatees have in a litter? I think one, one. one or Anybody two. Want to answer that? Oh, no. No. At the time? Yeah. Well, at Over a time, the in, at one time. Usually only one pup, right? Well, one pup. The eggs that was seldom, and they had twins. Really? Really? It can happen. It can happen. Oh, yeah. It's sort of like people. Yeah. Like sheep? Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Should we have a minute? It's working. What are we doing in here? So they're getting ready for the release. All right. The last gonna, step will be, I think, to weigh. We're going to see a release. I think they're going to try the ultrasound. Oh, try the ultrasound. Oh, okay. Use the fancy ultrasound table. <laughs> and the point of the ultrasound is to check for a pregnancy? Well, this is a female, yeah, so they want to see, look at a reproductive tract. And you are? Um, I'm Lauren. Lauren. Nice to meet you, Lauren. And you're from Lowry Park Zoo? Correct, correct. Awesome. I'm their associate veterinarian. Okay. Great. Great. And then grab over Oh, yeah. There are so many organizations here, you can't even keep them all straight. There's, there's cars out in the parking lot from SeaWorld and Lowry Park Zoo and um, Moat Marine Lab. And I'm trying to remember which ones I saw. Just a ton of, ton of people here. And so for those people who are just joining, uh, where are we again and what are we doing? We are in Crystal River, Florida at Paradise Point, which is a federal... Oh, I'm so sorry. It's, okay. it's a federal property, and uh, they're right here on the beach. We're doing manatee assessments for those of you just joining us. This is live, incredible manatee action taking place in beautiful Florida. And I'm just slapping people left and right. Go check this out. We are getting ready to walk the, the uh, ultrasound. Yeah, so if you guys want to hang with us for a while. She's been feisty for a while, actually. Yeah. This, this one's going to get let go, and if you guys want to hang with us for a while, we're going to go down and film how they catch the manatees, so don't go away. Stay with us. And if you're not subscribed to Blue World TV, I mean, dude, seriously, you should be subscribed. Hit the subscribe button now. Just get it out of the way. Just do it right now. It's right down, down that corner somewhere. Just click it. Just click it. All right. And then you, you'll know about our live feeds, which are fun and awesome. Actually, this is only our second live feed <laughs> ever. It's a beautiful day in Crystal River, Florida. <laughs> Are they going to weigh this? I think they're going to weigh it. Are you going to weigh it first? Yes. yes. Yeah, they'll weigh her and then they'll probably let her go. All right. Mm -hmm. You want to try again or do you feel good? Um, jump in, Mr. Bird. I don't have wet gear on. I mean, it's really hard to tell. It's, they did so fast. Yeah. They were, yeah. Okay. I think they're pushing this. It'll be nice. Turn the shady spot so you get the screen. It's hard to tell if I got it on. Yeah. All right, there they go. They're lifting the animal. The manatee's basically in a giant tarp, and they're carrying it. Really heavy-duty tarp. And follow along, and what they're going to do is pick it up and weigh it. Hey, anyone know the drill? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you.
Anyone? So what we have here is a metallic aluminum A-frame, and they have a, an electronic scale on it and a winch to pick the manatee up. And they'll put some chains on the corners of this sling, and they'll basically winch the manatee up just a couple inches off the ground and get the weight, and then they'll let her go. I don't need to be in the shop. Let them see, <laughs> see the manatee. <laughs> they don't want to see me. The funny thing is to listen to the winch under the weight of a manatee. So I think we need to keep the conversation going about what it is that we're doing. Because yeah. the questions keep coming in about, yeah. like, where are you, where are you, so what are you doing? One of the things you can do is you can stop the questions by touching them. <laughs> Yeah, but and scrolling them, and then if you wanted to, you can do it. You can shout out to someone and, and say who it is and what's their question. <clears throat> well, we can try to answer. It. All right, so they're getting the chains in position to lift this manatee up. Somewhere in there, there's actually a manatee. Yeah, they're hard to see because it takes so many people to lift them. Shot of the weight. Oh, we're gonna go. The battery's gonna die. Yeah. You wanna? We're gonna die. The well, battery's gonna it. die. All right. Well, the battery's gonna die. So. Catch the episode. Seven hundred and eighty-eight. All right. Thanks for watching, you guys. We'll get back to you later. There's the off button. <laughs> <laughs>